back with another video tutorial today and I'm super excited. Thank you so much for all of the feedback that I received from my first tutorial. It was really helpful and fun to hear from all of my crafty friends. One of the most requested items that I received was for a standalone video on how I construct my albums. And so that's what we're going to do today. But I need to preface this and remind you that I am not the creator of the lay flat method. That honor belongs to Tamara with Country Craft Creations. Now, if you don't know who Tamara is and you don't know what Country Craft Creations is, you are in for a treat. Tamara has created an amazing online craft store that carries pretty much everything you could ever need or want. And that would be fantastic in and of itself. But she did not stop there. She went on to create an online crafting community where she brings together designers and crafters and they offer free tutorials. They have all sorts of great information. Honestly, it's like attending a masterclass in everything paper related and it's super fun. So I'm going to link her website as well as the Facebook group in the notes below. And I hope you take the time to hop over there and check it out. So for today's video, I do a couple little things differently. One has to do with how I wrap my corners and the other one is how I attach my hinges to my spine. Hop on over to my website where you can access the free PDF cutting guide for this project and others. And there you can sign up for my upcoming newsletter. I'm really excited about that. Okay guys, I hope you're having a great day. Let's get into it. So the supplies needed are some sort of a trimmer or cutting tool. I have a pencil. I have a scoring tool, a finger blade, or you can use any other sort of exacto blade, a metal ruler. I have this amazing little corner tool that allows me to do my miters on my corners. And I will link that in the notes below. That was one of the things I got the most feedback on was where do you find that, that corner thingy? This is it. And then you need some sort of spacers. I purchased these from Country Craft Creations and they are amazing. And you'll need two that are one inches wide by 12 inches long. And you'll need one that's one and a half inches wide by 12 inches long. If you don't have these spacers, don't fret. I used my handmade spacers for a good year and a half before I actually purchased these from the website. I still highly recommend these, but in the interim, it's there's not a problem if you just wanna cut your own. I cut these out of the same medium weight chipboard that we're gonna to use to construct our album. You'll need one that's one and a half inches wide and two that are one inches wide. Okay, so we're gonna start with two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard and we are gonna cut them. We need two pieces that are eight inches by eight inches, and we need one piece that's two inches by eight inches. Now, when you use a paper trimmer like this, the blade is not deep enough to go all the way through on the first cut. So there's a couple ways to handle this. This is, I'm just showing you the way I do it. So I just cut it one time, and as you can tell, it didn't cut all the way through. I'm gonna turn it and make my second cut at eight inches. There we go. And like I said, it's not gonna cut it all the way through. So that's where my little finger blade comes into play. You can use a metal ruler to line up right next to that cuts if you wanna make sure that you know, you've, you're know you not gonna go off of the score that you just made or the kind of initial cut you made, but I found that it's really not necessary. When you place your blade in between those grooves from that first pass that you gave on the, on the um, paper trimmer, it stays in place. And as long as I just sort of lightly pull back, now I'm not pressing really hard, it'll take me two to three passes at most to go ahead and cut that all the way through. And the reason I like that is I get a nice, crisp, clean cut without any fuzzies or anything on there. When I have turned it upside down and gone back through the paper trimmer in the past, I always am off by just a little bit. Somehow I'm not lining it up all the way. And for me, this just works better. So I am, I've got one piece that's eight by eight. I need two. This little leftover piece that I cut off here that's four inches by eight inches, I'm gonna cut that down to two inches by eight inches and that's gonna be our spine. And then I'm gonna cut a second piece that's eight by eight and I'll be right back. Okay, 
So I've cut my pieces that I need and I've got these scraps left over. Don't toss them, save them. I've got another project that's coming up in a future video that we're gonna be able to use these so we're not gonna waste a thing. Okay, so now we're gonna wrap our pieces. We've got, again, one piece that's two inches by eight inches and we've got two pieces that are eight inches by eight inches out of our medium weight chipboard. To wrap them, we've got one piece that's five inches by 10 inches, and we've got two pieces that are 10 inches by 10 inches. This is gonna give us a one inch border all the way around for us to wrap the paper on our front and back cover. And it's going to give us a one inch border on the top and bottom, and a one and a half inch border on the sides to wrap our spine. So we're gonna take our scoreboard and we're gonna place the pieces of paper. And by the way, I'm using Artisan cardstock, which is just amazing, wonderful cardstock that is exclusive to countrycraftcreations.com. And it is really fantastic for really anything that you're gonna build, but especially for wrapping our albums because there's a lot of movement that goes on on those albums. We have actual working hinges on these albums and these joints that have to interact. And this is not gonna crack it's not going to warp. It's just going to be fantastic. I really love this paper. So using a 10 by 10 inch piece of artisan cardstock and an 8 by 8 inch piece of medium weight chipboard, we're going to lay it in our, scoring, our scoreboard and we're going to put our one inch spacers around there so that we're going to be exactly centered every time. Now I use art glitter glue other people, um, including Tamara, they use score sheets and score sheets are amazing. I am going to use them on the inside on my spine, but for my construction um, or for my wrapping, I should say, of my covers and my spine for my album, I use art glitter glue for everything. I do want to make sure I get it to the edges so that I don't end up with any buckling or anything on the edges there. And then we're going to get this stuck down just like that. Press it kind of into this corner where you've got these spacers acting as a stop for you. And then I like to really uh, give it a good burnishing down. It's like spreading out that glue so that you've got a nice even surface. So you're gonna really spread that glue out onto the cardstock turn it over and then I like to go around and just make sure I don't have any glue that has seeped out the sides. And having the glue seep out isn't necessarily a bad thing. It says you got it to the edge, but I wanna make sure um, that I've got it off of there. And then I take my scoring tool and I run it right up along the edge of that. Um, oh, my scoring tool is dirty, but that's okay. I run it right up along the edge of that chipboard pressing it down as I go, and it's sort of um, creating a, a fold around the chipboard, or starting the fold around the chipboard, which is eventually what we're going to do. So you can see it creates this sort of dimension there around the, around the chipboard. Then we're gonna take it, stand it up, kind of lean it up like this, just bend it forward, and really burnish down those folds. We do that on all four sides. I just lay it over on itself and really give it a nice firm burnishing. Really get that crisp fold there. And again, this is where you notice the difference on how superior the artisan cardstock is to other cardstock because it doesn't crack at all. Okay, the next step. Um, and this is all what Tamara does so far, except for that I use the, the glue on adhering the chipboard, is she cuts out the corners, which is really just smart, right? It's kind of like box making. So we're gonna give these straight cuts here on the squares that were created by folding and burnishing our cardstock around the chipboard. And you're going to come up just you're going to literally just cut out you're just going to cut out where that fold was okay then we're going to go around we're going to fold one side back and hold on to it place our scissors right up against the edge and give it a slight angle 
just like that. So you're going to end up with just a very slight angle. Let me do that again and I'll show you. So did that one kind of go, I, I do opposite sides. So I'm sure I get all of them Come over here, hold your scissors right up against that corner and just angle out. And this is what we're cutting off. It's this tiny little piece right there, right? Um, let me try to find one that's, so you can see it's got, it's just a little angle, just a very slight angle around there. So I'm gonna go around, do this on all of them. And I think I already did those. Come to the other side. And this is where, when you flip it over again, this is where you'll see the little, oh, little fuzzies sticking out here. You know, little places, maybe not fuzzies, but you'll see things like that, right? Where you have a little notch sticking out. So see how it looks like this little notch sticking out. That's what we're going to cut off. And so it looks kind of like that. I'm going to go around all four sides there. Once we've got those done, then this is where I get a little, a little extra. <laughs> this is where I do another step. This little miter tool is so great. It is made out of really hard iron. That is, what is this? It's an eighth of an inch. And it's not gonna bend or warp or go out of shape at all. And you simply butt that up against the corner on your chipboard, use your finger blade and cut off these corners, just like that. We're gonna go all around all four of them. And you don't have to press hard with your blade. Just drag it along there. If it doesn't cut through the first time, just go over it a second pass until it does. Okay. And then this is what you're gonna end up with, is a weird little notch in the center of that fold that makes it so when you pull it back, you end up with a perfect corner every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other pieces or the other cover and I'll be right back. Now we're gonna work on wrapping our spine. And for that, we're gonna use a one inch spacer at the top after placing it in the scoreboard. And we're gonna use the one and a half inch spacer on the side. And that's gonna give us, uh, that's gonna center our spine piece in the, in the cardstock that we're wrapping it with, with one inch border at the top and the bottom and a one and a half inch border on each side. The one and a half inch border on each side are going to create some wings that we are going to use to wrap around or wrap on the inside rather of the front and back cover and that's what it what's going to connect it so same thing we just did on the on the front and back cover put our glue down or if you use score tape or if you use the score sheets you know, whatever your preference is, like I said, I use the glue. I kind of just run this along the side. I don't actually have any, but I run this along the side and then I, I wipe between each one if there is glue. I miraculously didn't get any on there this time. <laughs> and then we're gonna take our bone folder. And again, this isn't probably necessary. It's just what I have found that works for me. And you may find other ways to kind of, uh, I don't know, finagle that paper into submission. <laughs> Get it to wrap around the way you like. I just like, uh, I like doing it that way. Come on around here, give it a nice firm crease, all four sides. And then this one, uh, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut out our squares. or actually there are rectangles because we've got longer on the sides than we do on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna go around and cut out all four of our rectangles. Just right along that, um, that fold line that we created. And then once those are done, we're gonna come back around here and we're gonna hold our scissors up there and kind of just go at a very slight 
angle and cut this little piece off here. So let's see if you can see it on this. That little piece off there. We're gonna go around all four sides and do the same thing, cutting that little angle up. And so you can see right here, there's like a little nubby. So you can see right here, do you see where there's like a little tiny piece of paper sticking out from where we cut it? I don't know if I can get that in angle. That's basically what we're gonna cut off when we when we lean our scissors into it. And then we end up with, let me get some paper behind here. Then we end up with a piece that looks like that. Okay. Get this other one done. I lost track of where I was where my cuts were. There we go. Okay. And then once that's done, then on this one, we're not going to miter our corners because how this is constructed and how Tamara created it was we're going to attach these two down and then these flaps are what's going to be used to attach it to the album. And I missed one of these. There we go. So what I do is I run a little bit of glue right up next to the, um, the chipboard. And then I'm going to add some glue here on this one inch piece, kind of press it in to that edge and then fold it over and give it a really good spreading out with all of that glue. Okay. And then if you have any of it, just kind of wrap it around here. Don't really have much there. There we go. Make sure you don't have any glue seeping out. I don't, I'm good. Let me give this a little trim. I didn't quite get enough of that on that. There we go. Do the same thing on the other end. A little bit of glue right up next to the chipboard. Kind of press it in. You can also just fold it over like I just did. Spread it out. Make sure we pick up any extra glue that might have run over. Sure, we don't have any glue along there and we are good to go. Then on the spine, we're going to turn it back over and that same little thing we did where we ran our bone folder along the side, we're going to do that again on both sides of the spine. And this piece is, is done for now and ready to use to attach our front and back covers. So we have our spine ready to go to attach to our front and back cover. We have glued the fronts on and trimmed and folded the edges around our front and back cover. And then we're gonna glue this one down just a little bit differently. On the spine, we only glued the top and bottom down and we left the wings in place. This one, we're gonna go all four sides. We get our glue right up there next to the edge of the chipboard. So we've got nice adhesion there. I like to stand it up and sort of wiggle it in, bend it over and then take, you know, your some sort of uh, bone folder, some sort of a you know tool that you have to really press it out, and spread it out. I kind of like that big spatula there. On my cutting mat, it sits up. I've got a little bit of a raise on my cutting mat. I also like to take when I've wrapped the side down and just let it hang over the edge of the cutting mat and take my bone folder right up along that edge. Um, because it's sort of freestanding then, and that helps me get a really nice, crisp, square edge to my wrapping. I'm gonna go to the opposite side, put my glue up against the um, chipboard, just like I have before. Stand it up and really kind of get that to, to work itself into the chipboard and the fibers of the, of the uh, cardstock. Spread that glue out. I got a little extra glue on the side over here. I want to kind of lift that up. If you run your bone folder or fingernail, I don't have fingernails, <laughs> or some other tool along that edge, you can sort of lift up that glue. Kind of give it that little crisp edge. Turn it. And now is where you're going to see the magic of 
cutting out the corners and using that mitering tool because I didn't have to pinch little pieces into the corner. I didn't have to, um, I'm not gonna have corners that um, are really bulky. I'm gonna have perfectly mitered corners every time. And I'm gonna have um, just really neat, clean corners. I don't know if you can see this, but it is just a perfect corner every time that I do it. Uh, I've got a cat that wants out, so I'll be right back. Turn it over so it's the kind of right side up and run that bone folder along those edges like we did before we did our folds so that we can encourage the, um, let's see if you can see. Let's see if you can see that. See how there's like a, a ridge there we've created? And that's how we're going to attach our front and back cover is we're gonna butt it right up next to that ridge. And they are going to come on here just like this. And those mitered edges are great because it takes the bulk out. One of the problems I was having with doing it with the squares was in doing this method, I had a really, a really big ridge here where that was attaching to the spine piece. And this for me solves that. Now other people probably don't have that problem because they probably do something, I'm gonna take a little bit of this off. They probably do something a little bit differently than I do or they just do a better job of lining it up. But for me that was happening and this is just a way that I've been able to address that and solve it. Now, when you are attaching your pieces to the spine, it would be really nice if I could use this method. I'm gonna show it to you, but I can't use it. You could put them in your in your scoreboard just like this, and that is gonna make sure that you are always lined up perfectly perpendicular and square to your spine piece. I cannot do that because my scoreboard is wonky and it has this little lip here. And so when I start coming out here, things start going off on a tangent because it's sort of veering off that way. So because of that, I have figured out that, that it is not really hard to do it on um, just on your, on your desktop. Um, and you just wanna make sure that your top and bottom are lined up. You wanna make sure you're pressed in all the way to that edge that we have created along the chipboard and those wings are gonna get glued down. Now I have to let you know, we do not want to get glue in this edge because this is a working hinge, right? And we don't wanna get glue along the edge of the cover either because it will stick to it and it might even pull away from the paper in, in kind of not a great way. So what we're going to do is I put glue up to about, a oh gosh, a quarter of an inch-ish maybe a little shy of a quarter of an inch, close to that where the spine is. And then I'm gonna fill in my glue all the rest of my wing, my little attachment piece here. And then I'm going to add a thin bead of glue right along about a 16th of an inch from the edge of my cover. I don't want to go any closer than that. In fact, even this little, there's like a little bit there. I'm just going to kind of wipe that off just to make sure it doesn't spread into that. And then I'm going to take my cover and I'm going to push it right up against that chipboard of my spine. And when I do that, you can see that it lifts up. See how it lifts up the, the spine piece? That tells me that I'm right in that exact spot. I'm gonna give it a nice little pressing here. Oops, sorry, that was loud. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over and really spread out that glue. Now you can see I've got a little bit seeping on the top and bottom and that's totally fine. I don't mind that. That tells me that I got it all the way to the edge. What I don't want is I don't want glue seeping in that seam there. And as you can see, I don't have any glue 
in that seam and that's what we want. Now I do a little extra step at this point and that is I go ahead and take a couple of clips because again, the reason I wanted to miter those corners is because the uh, those corners can kind of press out. When you have, when you're applying glue to paper, it is porous and this is a water-based glue and it can kind of swell those fibers. And in doing so, it, it can push it away from that side. I just put those on there just for a little bit. I mean, just long enough for me to get the next piece together, put my glue on and get ready to adhere it. That's long enough for it to set so it doesn't start pulling away from the side there because the glue is sort of swelling those fibers. Okay, that's it, just that little bit. Now we're gonna add some glue along here, again, about a quarter of an inch from the chipboard on our spine. I'm gonna fill in the rest of this attachment piece with glue. So this is essentially what's holding our book together. Then we're gonna take and just put a little thin bead of glue about a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the, the edge. And if I get to where I feel like it's a little too close to the edge, I'll come and take my thumb and sort of just rub that back so that it doesn't, it doesn't connect there. But where I really do wanna make sure I've got some is on these ends, just along that edge. I'm gonna lay it in. So I'm, I'm, I'm centered top and bottom here, so it's lined up. I've made my, see how it's making that hinge lift up? That tells me I'm in the perfect placement. I'm just right in that little groove there. Give it a little bit of pressure, turn it over, go ahead and spread that glue out. Again, if I have some at the top and bottom, it's totally fine kind of prefer that. I'm gonna check to make sure I don't have any glue in there and I don't. I'm gonna go ahead and add my clips just until that sets. And we have wrapped and attached our front and back covers to the spine. Our front and back cover are wrapped and attached to our spine. And as you can see in this lay flat method, this can, I mean, it is just completely flat. It is the best album construction I've ever tried. Do you see how beautiful these edges are? They're just fantastic. So the key to this whole construction on putting those wings on the inside that I have found is using the score sheets. And these are kind of a thick adhesive. It's a double-sided adhesive and it has a lot of body to it. We're gonna add a piece on the inside to give it some more structure and to really make sure that we have a strong and sturdy album in place. And how I like to attach mine is I just peel back on the backing, I peel back a corner, I take my piece, in this case it's five by eight, and that eight is a scant, it's a scant eight inches. It's just a hair shy of eight inches because I want this to come all the way from the top to the bottom, but I don't want any overhang. So I've just, I've just backed it off a tiny bit. And we're gonna attach this to our score sheets. And I like to just sort of get my corner set, hold my finger down, line up one side and lay it down and get that corner attached. I go ahead and peel it back, but I don't remove it. And then I take my blade and you can lay a ruler down if you like. I just sort of run my blade along the edge of my cardstock and I'm lightly pulling it, very lightly. I'm not giving it a hard press of any kind at all, and it'll release when it's ready. And then I'm gonna do the other side the same way and just very lightly run it along the edge of my cardstock until it releases on its own. And then I have a perfectly covered sheet 
I can go ahead and attach this back to the backing and use it on other projects. I did forget one little step here. I want to go ahead and burnish down this double-sided tape sheet, the score tape sheet, just to make sure that I've got good adhesion on there. And I'm going to lift up just one corner the same way I attached it to the pay, the to the paper is the same way I'm going to attach it here in the album. And then I'm going to sort of line it up. I like to take my fingers and I'm pressing up against the bottom here almost as a stop, kind of lining it up where I want it to go, making sure that, you know, and a lot of this is feel, I can sort of feel the edge of it, making sure I'm not going over the edge there. Line that up. Once I get that front corner stuck down, then I'll go ahead and peel off the rest of it. And I am just gonna really press down the whole piece here. And then I'm gonna take a smaller bold bone folder. You can use one like this that has a thinner edge. I like, I use this one, it's not great, but it's just the one I like to use and I press it in here. Now you're seeing some, some things come off here. That's glue, uh, dry glue that's on my bone folder because it's not clean. It's totally fine. It'll come right off. And then I want to press the other side and I'm just kind of going back and forth lightly at first inside of that hinge, okay? Then I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna start lifting it up at a more acute angle just keep going, keep going, keep pressing it in there. Boy, I really should have cleaned this off. <laughs> and then I'll get to the point where I can fold it all the way over. And do you see how squared up this is? I don't, I'm not off at all. I mean, it is just perfectly square. And that is thanks to this album construction and, and how we put this together. Do have a little bit of glue here, rub that off. We are good to go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just sort of gently at first, keep going, keep going. Really work that in there. Bend it all the way over. Give it a nice, firm burnishing down. Really work that seam. Good grief. Who knew I had such a... I don't know, that might actually be pieces of the plastic of the bone folder, who knows. Anyway, I'm just making sure that this is down all the way. And once it's down, we have a sturdy album cover that isn't gonna go anywhere at all. Let's go ahead and make our hinges. For our hinge construction, we are going to need one piece of paper that is five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Our pages are gonna be seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So the seven and three quarters is the height of the page and the, and the hinge, and the five and three quarters is the width of the hinge. And we are going to score this on the right side at three eighths of an inch, at one inch, at one and five eighths of an inch, at two and a quarter inches, at two and seven eighths, at three and a half, at four and one eighth, at four and three quarters, and at five and three eighths, okay? So that is, I move my notes over here so I can read them better. Three eighths of an inch, one inch, one and five eighths, two and a quarter, two and seven eighths, three and a half, four and an eighth, four and three quarters, and five and three eighths. And what that is going to give us is that it's gonna give us three eighths of an inch gusset at the front and the back of our hinge. Each of our hinges are five eighths of an inch high. So this is one hinge, just is two of these pieces here. And we have a five eighths of an inch gusset in between. So it's gonna give me one, two, three pages 
with hinge uh, with the gusset in between. I'm going to write some notes on here so that you can see it. Now, how this translates on the back here is we have a gusset, hinge, hinge, gusset, hinge, hinge, gusset, hinge, hinge, and gusset. Okay, and either way you do it, that's how it works out. So now we're going to fold and burnish our score marks accordingly. The gussets are going to be the flat pieces that attach to the spine or in my case to the spine attachment mechanism that I'm going to build. The hinges are going to stand up and they're going to be the, um, the mechanism of being able to turn the pages. So on the gussets, that's a valley fold. I like to put the smaller side down like on this edge with the gusset and sort of lift up the larger part of the paper. I don't know, for me, it gives me some sort of leverage because that's kind of a small little fold to make. It's not quite as difficult as when you're doing those little um, eighth of an inch folds, but it is, it's on the edge of the paper. So it feels like it could be a little harder. And I wanna make sure that it is, you know, it's staying straight, that I'm not going off on a tangent. I'm gonna do that on both sides while I have this flat piece here to use as almost a leveraging tool to fold that over and get that really straight, um, that straight burnishing there on those end pieces that are gonna be our, our end gussets. And then it's just, you know, we're gonna mount and fold the hinge pages. So between each of these that are the, the hinge pieces that are gonna attach together, um, got a little bit of glue, little schmaltz there, a little glue there. Um, but on each of the hinge pieces here, we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish those as a mountain. And then when we get to the gusset, we're gonna fold and burnish that as a valley fold. So then on each of the gussets, that's kind of a valley. So that this, the hinges are gonna stand up, the valleys are gonna stay flat. So then I'm gonna go ahead and fold another valley fold here. That's gonna complete our gusset piece, see, like that. And then we're gonna move on to the next set of hinges, which gets a mountain fold in between those sections. And then we go back to the gusset. So essentially you get into this rhythm where you're folding, um, you know, mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley. Until we get to the end here. Okay. Our last mountain fold here on our hinge. And there we go. We've got all of our hinges um, folded and burnished. And as you can see, we've got three hinges that are gonna move like this. On the back side, we are all of the eight, all the H's for the hinges are the ones who folded together and we're left with our gussets. And now we're gonna glue it together. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened, but my camera wasn't recording, I thought it was. So I went ahead up and made up another hinge section to show you how we glued it up. Um, I had glued up the one, thought I was on camera, and got this one all glued up, but it wasn't recording. So. If you remember on the back side, I had put some uh, some notations on here that we had gusset, hinge, hinge, gusset, hinge, hinge, gusset, hinge, hinge, and gusset. What we're going to do is we're gonna apply glue to one of the hinge pieces here and attach them to each other. And when I put my glue down, I don't come all the way to the edge of that fold that will eventually be the gusset. So I don't really want that oozing out there, but I do put a good amount of glue on here. And the reason being, I really want this to be truly laminated together as if it were just a single piece. Um, and so I'm gonna keep working that glue back and forth. And if there's any on the ends to squeeze out, I wanna squeeze it out. Don't really see much coming out there. And just keep pushing that glue back and forth, keep working that paper so that it really becomes bonded as a singular unit. And one of the ways I check to see if I'm going, if I'm, if I'm staying straight on this is because I've got a three quarters, I'm sorry, because I have a five eighths of an inch hinge, meaning this is five eighths of an inch is high. 
and my gussets are also 5 eighths of an inch, I can lay that inside of the gusset and when it lines up, then I know that I am, I'm on the right path here of keeping things all, you know, true and in alignment. I do flip it back and forth several times and burnish both from the front side and the back side. And I burnish from the front side with the hinge facing one way and from the front side with the hinge facing another way. And then the same way, the back side with the hinge facing one way and then the other way. So I'm really working this so that it is, um, it becomes a mechanical piece in our construction. So I'm going to go on to the next set of hinge sections here that are going to be bonded together as one and apply my glue. And again, I'm, I'm fairly liberal with the glue. I'm just careful not to come to the edge of that valley fold that becomes the gusset. I don't want that glue to sort of seep out into there. Um, it gets a little bit messy, but also it the this glue will bond those fibers. And I don't want to, I don't want it to bond and then have I have to pull it apart so that I can get the mechanism to move. Um, because that's not great and strong, but I also don't want to weaken um, the fibers and having them go into a different position. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, see how this hinge is fitting in perfectly inside of that gusset. It's a seamless right along there with the, with the other uh, hinge. And so when I peel it back, you can kind of see the valley of the gusset in here and it lays right in. And that tells me that I'm going straight and that my, my hinges are off, my pages are gonna veer off. So I wanna really make sure I take time on this step here. This particular hinge unit has three hinges and is equipped to hold three pages. Now on those pages, you can add essentially other you know, elements to it that become more pages. You can treat it almost like a place to attach a signature even, but um, that's what we're dealing with right now is just the three, three hinge units. Okay. So again, I'm really gonna push this down. I'm really coming along here, spreading that glue out. I've heard Tamara from Country Craft Creations, who is the creator of the lay flat method. I've heard her explain this as, as almost like um, spreading out wallpaper paste. If you've ever hung wallpaper, you know, you know what that's like. You have to kind of work it uh, to get it to go where it needs to go. So again, my hinge is laying right inside of that gusset and that's exactly what I want it to do. That tells me that everything is straight where I need it to be. My backside looks really good and that is exactly how I want my hinges to look. Now that we've got those glued together and they are operating smoothly, um, you have one of two options at this point. You can either attach this directly to the spine of our book and it will come in here exactly where it needs to be. Now you may find that through the folding process, et cetera, that it might be overhanging a little bit or it might be short a little bit. Um, typically what I find is that there's an overhang. I push these first two hinges in so that it lays flat in here and I kind of visually look and see where it needs to be. This one looks good. I don't think I would need to trim anything off of here. At that point, I would turn it over I would apply my glue over the entire back side here where all these gussets are. I would place it in, in where it needs to go, giving me about an eighth of an inch at the top and the bottom. Oh, little glue hanging out here. Uh, giving me an eighth of an inch at the top and the bottom. And then I would burnish it down really well, uh, folding the hinges one way, then coming, coming between each gusset, fold them the other way and glue it down. So that's one option. That's more of a traditional way of doing it. If you choose to do the expandable hinge attachment that I put on here, which is like a, it's like a gusset for the hinges itself, will allow it to come out. Then you'll follow the next steps. Okay. So for the gusseted hinge attachment that I've sort of come up with that works for me. Again, there's other people that do versions of this and it works for them. This is just what works for me. 
take it, play with it, make it your own. Um, but for this piece, for a two inch spine, I need a piece that is four and a half inches by seven and three quarters inches. Remember our page units, our hinges, they're all seven and three quarters inches tall. So on the four and a half inch side, we're gonna put it in our scoreboard and we are going to score at one, one and one eighth, one and one quarter, okay? Three and a quarter, three and three eighths, and three and a half. And what that gives us is that gives us one inch on either side, two inches in the middle, and it gives us a little um, quarter of an inch space in between those two that we're going to create a accordion fold gusset that is gonna be expandable for our hinges to be able to move. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we are going to fold and burnish this. And because we're dealing with these little quarter of an, I'm sorry, eighth of an inch um, folds that we need to do, it gets a little tricky. So what I like to do is I like to fold, and, and they're gonna be folded as this. They're gonna be folded mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. So I like to fold the two mountains first on either side. So it's four mountain folds total. And then I'll come back in and do the little, the little fussy little valley folds um, a little differently. I'm gonna use these mountain folds to sort of assist on getting those valley folds in where they need to be. So again, I like to lay the paper down and kind of use it to fold over on itself. I feel like it gives me a little bit of leverage in moving it. Uh, this one, there we go. And I wanna make sure that my edges are lined up as I'm going so I'm not, you know, I'm staying right true to that, um, to that score mark that we gave it, right? There we go that all nice and crisp. And so the first step is going to be to fold those uh, mountain folds and you're going to have a piece that looks, oh, can you see something kind of like this? Okay. And then what we're going to do, because it's like a, almost like a, a little tube, but like a square, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay it down and I just lightly, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just lightly holding it in place. And I'm gonna take, you can either do this, well, actually I'm gonna press hard right in the middle of it, but I don't wanna push, I don't wanna push down on those folds that we made, on that gusseted fold that we made. And then I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna kinda gently run it right along the middle and I'm encouraging the paper to fold and since we gave it that score line, it's gonna naturally wanna take the, the path of least resistance. And it's gonna start folding on itself right onto that little eighth of an inch fold that we made. I'm gonna line up the, the top and the bottom with the piece underneath, and I'm just gonna keep working it. I'll find a middle that kinda of wants to go down, and you'll feel as it wants to release, it'll be ready to sort of go into place. And what we want it to do is we want those first two folds that we made and scored, we want them to meet up perfectly with each other. And then the remaining paper is going to kind of fall into place on there. So if you can see, are going to put some glue on the back of our hinge attachment here that we have made. Let me get my glue bottle ready. And I'm just going to go all along here. And, and I use a good amount of glue, being careful to evenly distribute it. I don't want so much that it's really gloppy, but I don't want a thin you know, I, I don't want something that it's going to pull apart either. Okay. Maybe. Okay. 
And then this unit here is going to be adhered just on the top of this little expansion unit that we built. Making sure it's the, it's the same size, so it's going to line up perfectly here. We want to make sure that the top and bottom are all aligned. And open it up. And I am going to really burnish this down. I want to make sure that I have really good contact with every single fiber, every single surface of both sides of this paper. And if the glue is flowing right between them evenly, so that this also becomes its own singular unit. Just gonna keep working that down. Getting a little glue out the ends. And again, that does not bother me. It just lets me know that I got it all the way to the end. I mean, I don't have a, a giant glob of it coming out, so. But just at least, at least seeing a little bit lets me know. And then I'm going to come along, once I've got those all in place, I'm going to lay my hinges down one way and burnish it. Then I'm going to fan them over to the other side. Oops. Don't mean to. And go ahead and, and burnish that. Really give it a nice, good, firm pressing. And as you can see, all of these hinges are lined up perfectly. They fit into one another almost like they lock into one another. And that is exactly what you're trying to see. It makes me really happy when I see that. I do like to take my bone folder, either something like this or like this, and really go up along that edge of either side of the hinge. Because we worked really hard to make sure these hinges can move freely. We are only attaching that gusset portion. There we go. And so now we have perfect little hinges that are attached to our expandable unit here. And then we're going to put that in our book. The way I put this in the book is to glue one side at a time. So I'm going to take not in the gusseted part. There's no glue that's gonna go in this gusseted part. Only on these one inch flaps that are on the back. I'm gonna take one at a time and I'm gonna cover it with glue much in the same way that I put glue on the back side of the hinges. Just, it, it looks like a lot on the black paper. It really is a thin bead, but I am applying that thin bead rather close together and I'm making sure that I'm getting full coverage all over the entire section here. So it's not a lot of glue, it's just a, um, a lot of coverage, if that makes sense. And then once we've got that on, I'm gonna come over here and get pretty much on the edge of where, my, of where the chipboard is for my hinge. I want to make sure I've got an even, um, even distance. Let's scoot it over just a little bit. And this is why I like being able to do this one side at a time because I can lift it up and kind of look and see. I want to make sure I've got an even distance from the top and the bottom. Okay, and that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and burnish it down. Get a really good burnishing. You got a glue come out, but not much. Again, it's not a lot of glue, but it is a lot of coverage. So, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, on the other little flap. Get down our glue, making sure that we are fully covered. And these are both one inch flaps. So we have a two inch hinge. They pretty much butt right up next to each other. And as long as you line up the first side when you glue it down, the second side just falls into place, which has been, at least that's been my experience. And 
I like any, I like anything that just falls into place. And so I kind of lay it down and I, I push it over until I can, I can feel it hit that other, the other piece that I know I'm right in place there. Go ahead and, and burnish it as well. Really press it down so it's got good contact. And, you know, depending on what tool works best for you, you know, just sometimes I go back and forth between them. And then you can lift it up and put your um, bone folder inside and really kind of just make sure it's all down. Let me go back over it again. Make sure we are really connected. Okay, and that is it. Now we have our hinge attached in a way that it can move freely from the spine. And once I get the pages on, it'll be a little easier for you to see that part. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to the page construction. For the pages, you will need three pieces of paper that measure seven and three quarters by seven and five eighths they do not get scored in any way, so we're gonna set them aside. And you will need three pieces that are seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter. On the seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter inch piece, we are going to score all three of them. On the eight and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score them at seven and three quarters. Essentially, when we're done and they folded, all three of these pieces are going to measure seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So on eight and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score it seven and three quarters, basically a half an inch attachment piece. And I had scored this one incorrectly, but we're just gonna ignore that and go on. <laughs> and then we are gonna fold and burnish our score marks. And essentially it's turning these pages that began as seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter into a seven and three quarter inch square. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the two pieces together. We've got one measuring seven and three quarter by seven and five eighths. We've got one that measures seven and three quarter by eight and a quarter that has been scored one half of an inch from the end on the eight and a quarter inch side, essentially resulting in a seven and three quarter inch square piece of paper once that's been folded and burnished. The best way to make sure these are aligned correctly is to stand them up with the fold at the top, making sure that the right side and the left side when you've stood it up like this are flush with each other. Tap it down so that it hits right there so that it's also flush on this side. All three sides except for the one half inch attachment here are gonna be flush with each other. On the side where we have the one half inch attachment, we cut this an eighth of an inch short on purpose. With the fold and all of the room that kind of is taken up by that fold, it's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch gap, but that's totally fine. It's gonna be completely encased and it's not gonna be a problem at all. We're gonna apply glue towards the edge of this, um, this flap. And we're gonna come down a little bit more than halfway but we're not gonna come all the way down to that, um, to that crease. Fold it over, press it down. Make sure we've cleaned up any glue that might've seeped out. And then I open it up and make sure if there's any glue that has seeped out inside here, I'm cleaning that up as well. Because again, this is gonna be a pocket. I want things to be able to move in and out of here. I don't want them to get caught. Okay, so that looks really good. Our edges are all lined up. I didn't miter those these corners on this fold. Um, if I need to, I always do it afterwards. So if you have something sticking out here, I'll take my scissors and hold it up against here and just trim whatever I need to. But I don't need to, these are pretty straight. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this on the other two pages now.
So those are our three pages. And now we're going to insert them into our album on the spine. Now this is optional. Some people like to decorate their pages before they put them in the book. I don't. I prefer to put them in the book and work out of it. And how I put the pages in the book is I tend to start at the back of the book. Oh, one more thing. I have messed up and started decorating the book upside down more times than I can count. And to keep me from doing that in the future and on these books, I just pick a side and designate it as the front. Now, you might have a side you really like better than the other. This one came together really well, and I don't have a necessarily good side or bad side. So I'm just going to write front and back. I lay the page down against the hinge, and I, because I cut them the exact same size, they line up perfectly. I just have to make sure that I'm flush at the top, flush at the bottom. I've pressed it into between the hinge and the gusset. I folded it down and I press it right between. I'm flush at the top and the bottom. I check around here. I make sure that my reveal is even all around the sides, okay? And it's looking pretty good to me. At that point, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to hold it down flat just to keep the paper from moving. I fold the hinge piece back. Again, I'm holding the page down and I'm just going to apply glue towards the top of the hinge, that the top fold piece there of the hinge. And I'm going to come down about halfway. Okay. And then I'm going to take a piece of glue and I'm going to go right along this edge of our page. And then I'm going to fold my hinge back down on my page. Again, I'm flush top and bottom. I've got it kind of pressed into that seam of the hinge, space between the hinge and the gusset with it, this folded over like that. And I'm going to flip it back over and check. And what happens when I do that, when I fold and then press it in, is it gives me just a little tiny little bit of reveal of, reveal of that hinge between the hinge and the gusset. So my page, see, my page doesn't come all the way down to the edge of that hinge. I've got a very slight little area there and that's gonna give it room to move back and forth. And so then I'm gonna fold it back over. I'm gonna to check to make sure my reveal is good top and bottom over here, which I pretty much already know it is because as I was building my hinges, because they were snuggling in so well in that gusset, I knew that they were gonna be straight. But you know, sometimes you've got them veering off like that and now would be the time to take that page off and re-glue it. So now I've, I've got one side attached to my hinge. I'm gonna open it back up. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put glue towards the top of the hinge. And by the top, I mean this, this part here that, that bends this top, the top here towards you. So I'm gonna put the glue towards the top. I'm gonna to come down about halfway. I'm not gonna come down all the way though because I don't want glue right up there into that, um, into the fold of my hinge. I'm gonna put a small thin bead of glue about a, a 16th an inch, an eighth of an inch to a 16th an inch from the edge. And because we're closing up this pocket here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a small bead of glue at the bottom of the page also. And that's gonna seal it up for us so we have a top um, pocket, and a pocket that we can access from the top, okay? And then once this folds over, we're gonna burnish it. We know that we've got glue exactly where we need it to be and not where we don't want it to be. Go ahead and work all of this in here. There we go. And right now I'm just, you know, I'm just making sure it has contact while, uh, while those fibers bond. So really the press, I'm not really adding a lot of pressure as far as like, I'm not pushing really hard. I'm just, you know, making sure that it's connected. Okay, so now we've got our first page in, well, actually our last page, <laughs> but we have one of our pages in. And then the next are really easy. You do the same thing. 
I butt it up against this hinge, fold it over. When you fold it over, it kind of pushes the hinge back this way. That's what gives you that little bit of space, okay? I'm going to line it up top and bottom, make sure that I am perfectly lined up, making sure that my pages over here are lined up as well, okay? seeping out here at the bottom, which is just fine. We're going to clean that up and we're good to go. We now have built our album. We built our hinges. If you chose to do the, uh, the kind of gusseted attachment on the hinge, then it's going to have movement like that. And this is our album construction. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below. You can send me an email or message me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm going to have those links in the description as well. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Happy crafting!